Hi everyone, I'm Arsalan Arif, the publisher of Endpoints News, and I'm pleased to be your moderator today. Today's webinar is sponsored by Agilex Biolabs in Australia. Our topic is why Australia is the world's leading early phase destination. Rapid startup, no IND required, and a government-backed refund on almost half of all trial costs. I'm joined by two great guests today, Kurt Sales, the Director of Immunoassay at Agilex Biolabs, and Jane Kelly, the CEO of CMAX Clinical Research. Hi, lovely to be here. Hi, Jane. Hello. Hi, to have you here. All right. Um, so Kurt has a quick presentation for us today. 18 minutes, he says. He's really good at him, so I'm going to hold him to that. Um, so he's going to give us that presentation, and then right afterwards, we're going to get Jane in the thick of things with Jane and Kurt having a Q&A from me. So please get your questions in. You can hit that Q&A button right down there. If we can't get to it during this session, someone will follow up with you by email. And now I give you Kurt Sales. Thanks very much, Arslan, and um, hi, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Um, I'll just share my screen. Well, welcome, everyone, and today's webinar will discuss why Australia is the world's leading early phase destination and how Agilex Biolabs and CMAX Clinical Research work together in order to manage timelines and success for your clinical trial. The uh, contents of today's presentation will generally outline why Australia is the leading destination for clinical trials, a little bit about Agilex Biolabs, what we do, our bioanalytical capability, and how we seamlessly fit in with clinical research um, organizations such as CMAX in Adelaide in order to uh, deliver your clinical trial. So really the Australian advantage is underpinned by three main aspects, quality, speed, and cost. Uh, the quality of our medical system is second to none. Our facilities are uh, incredible and most of our key opinion leaders have also trained overseas and are well connected with their international colleagues. In addition to that, our data from all of the trials generated in Australia are compliant with regulatory agencies uh, internationally. And these include the US FDA, EMA, NFDS and TFDA. The speed of our regulatory process is extremely speed, streamlined, which allows the sponsor to get the study into the clinic that much faster. For example, a full CMC package isn't required, but instead a protocol, informed consent, insurance certificate, and investigator brochure is all that the ethics committee requires. And because everything sits within the ethics committee for decision making in order to start the clinical trial, it's a really um, fast process, enabling um, most uh, clinical trials to be started in as little as four to six weeks after ethics committee submission. Um, and typically, and especially if contracting directly with Agilex, contracts can be reviewed and signed off um, in a really short time, enabling us to start the bioanalytical component um, that much um, earlier than the clinical trial, first patient, first dose, um, to enable everything to be uh, ready for uh, the clinical trial start. Uh, in addition to that, we can also uh, perform so a fast sample turnaround um, for um, studies that require um, um, data in, in real time and for decision making. Finally, uh, the cost advantage um, is a really lucrative incentive. We buy tech companies that are earning less than $20 million of revenue per, uh, per year may be eligible for the research and development rebate of 43.5%. And this is a generous tax incentive that um, has been put in place by the Australian government. Um, and it covers all aspects of the clinical trial. So not necessarily just the trial itself or the bioanalytical component, but absolutely everything that um, is associated um, with the, the startup, the conduct and the closure of that clinical trial within, within Australia. Um, and it's, it's a really simple process and companies, of course, need to establish a, a local entity that's really inexpensive, but takes a, a number of weeks only to, uh, to establish the entity. Um, but the cost savings are substantial and that allows most companies, especially small biotechs, where they are burning rather than earning, to stretch their, their cash that much further um, and um, you know, be able to conduct uh, far more clinical trials um, than they ordinarily do elsewhere. Uh, in addition, our service provider costs are also about 15 to 20% lower in Australia um, than in, in other countries. Um, so th thereby further extending the, the, the cash revenue advantage. Finally, talking a little bit about COVID-19, um, Australia has fared relatively well during the pandemic. Um, 
we haven't experienced the number of study cancellations as encountered in other parts of the world. Um, and in fact, I mean, Jane will talk a little bit to this later on. It's been very much business as usual um, with Agilex Biolabs and all the phase one units staying open throughout um, in order to uh, enable um, new drug discovery and, and drug to market. So a little bit about Agilex Biolabs. Um, we're the oldest and largest and leading bioelectrical laboratory in Australia. Uh, we have over 20 years experience. Um, and you know, we've worked across multiple uh, different projects, cumulative more than 350, and this encompasses both small and large molecule bioanalysis. We work globally across um, all countries, um, and we've grown extensively over the past 18 months, um, such that we have more than 95 uh, experienced uh, staff. So our service lines really include both small molecule bioanalysis by tandem mass spectrometry and, and the usual chromatography, and also large molecule bioanalysis, which encompasses um, the usual uh, ligand binding type assays, which I'll discuss a little bit later on. In addition to supporting pharmacokinetics and immunogenicity, we can also support biomarker analysis uh, and, a, and a variety of pharmacodynamic endpoint uh, analyses for clinical trials. We're a very customer focused organization. We've been FDA inspected um, and we're also um, accredited by the, um, the National Australian Testing Authority for both OECD GLP and also 17025, which is an ISO um, R&D um, uh, chemical testing facility accreditation. We pride ourselves on timeliness and speed. We can uh, provide fast turnaround for sample analysis for clinical trial. Um, enabling the trial to uh, move that much further and faster during the single and multiple escalation dose phases. A little bit about our bioanalytical expertise. We work to both the FDA and the EMA bioanalytical guidances for both small molecule and large molecule bioanalysis. Um, we support pharmacokinetic or PK assays, and here we can either develop these assays from scratch um, or we can transfer the method over from a sponsor laboratory or, or, or other CRO. We utilize multiple instrument platforms in order to deliver this, and this ranges from LCMSMS, um, tandem mass spectrometry for small molecule bioanalysis, and also um, ELISA, MSD, and, and Gyro Lab for large molecule bioanalysis. And we have expertise in a range of molecules and cell types, uh, extending from novel chemical entities to biological entities, antibody drug conjugates, biosimilars, and a variety of novel antibody um, constructs. And we can use the method to measure these in, in uh, total, um, or we can measure these free in serum, plasma, or, or multiple other uh, matrices. When it comes to large molecule bioanalysis, there's a regulatory requirement to also consider immunogenicity and um, and we conduct immunogenicity assays in a tiered approach for our sponsors, uh, generally starting with a single um, ADA assay or anti-drug antibody assay um, for screening and then confirmatory and, uh, and titer assays. And we can move on in a stepwise manner to also include neutralizing antibody assays for our client. And the team over the years has developed substantial experience in a range of non-standard assay formats. These include techniques such as uh, acid dissociation, affinity capture elution, precipitation, and acid dissociation, also called PANDA, and solid phase extraction and acid dissociation or SPEED. And these are really to optimize the assays for drug tolerance, uh, especially an issue in uh, antibody uh, drug trials where um, over time with increasing dosage, uh, the, uh, the there's a huge amount of drug tolerance that's required in, in order to dissociate the anti-drug antibody from the actual dose drug um, as these complex within uh, the matrix. Um, and um, we provide statistical analysis um, uh, to the industry standard uh, for, for our, our studies. When it comes to neutralizing antibody assays, and here we can do these both by ligand binding uh, assay uh, technologies, um, where we use a competitive approach um, using, for example, the MSD platform. Um, and we can also provide a cell-based assay um, solution for clients that are wishing to um, identify more a mode of action associated with the neutralizing effect of the antibody um, to their drug. Finally, um, and, and this is a 
recent addition to our laboratory that we've expanded substantially over the past 18 months. Um, we now have enhanced pharmacodynamic uh, assay capabilities. So we can develop uh, and validate the usual biomarker assays um, for clients just wishing to investigate whether um, their, their drug product has actually impacted a specific pathway and perhaps modulated um, an inflammatory mediator. Um, but over the past year, we've developed a, 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 a installed a brand new immunobiology function, which encompasses mode of action assays and flow cytometry. And this really enables um, clients within the immuno-oncology space and vaccine space um, to be able to identify efficacy um, and look at the effect of their drug in real time in whole blood or PBMCs um, during the clinical trial. So what is it that we measure? Well, we measure new chemical entities, new biological entities. Um, these include proteins, peptides, and conjugates. Um, we can also measure cells by flow cytometry um, and oligonucleotides um, by a variety of techniques such as um, tandem mass spectrometry um, or hybridization techniques. Um, as mentioned in the previous slide, we can measure anti-drug antibodies or neutralizing antibodies. And we can also focus on inflammation and immunological assessments. And these include immunophenotyping of peripheral blood um, and, and organ uh, material. And this really would enables the client to get some quantitative information on the abundance of immune cells and how these might change during the, the clinical trial situation, either in response to um, the drug, um, where it might be a, a warranted response, in, um, such as target engagement, where a ligand receptor interaction uh, and persistent um, might occupy a receptor on the surface of the cell, and the client might want to investigate in real time, you know, how long the drug remains on that receptor um, and, uh, and, and how it might wane over time. And the immunological impact of that ligand receptor um, uh, occupancy um, on the uh, pharmacodynamic process within the body. And for here, we can also then provide a variety of really um, custom-made immunological assays, um, and I've listed a, a couple of common assays um, on this slide. And more often than not, clients are interested in whether the drug might impact an activation state of immune cells, um, and so we, we're uh, including a variety of T and B cell activation panels and also T cell proliferation panels for a variety of our immuno-oncology studies that we are currently supporting. So how do we measure this? Um, and uh, in, in this slide, it's very busy, um, but I'll take you through it in, in a stepwise manner. Um, and um, the close proximity of uh, phase one unit CMAX um, to Adelaide um, is really advantageous for a variety of um, trials, immuno-oncology trials, vaccine trials, where our whole blood might need to be processed in real time to um, isolate, for example, PBMCs. So if we consider that a subject or a patient is dosed um, at, uh, at the phase one unit, for example, CMAX, um, we, we would then uh, get whole blood from CMAX and, and we can get um, blood you know, in, a, in a matter of, of minutes or, or hours, depending on uh, the, the trial design. Um, and and from, from here, we can either isolate PBMCs from the whole blood um, in order for us to do um, in-life immunological assessments um, or we can store these PBMCs frozen uh, for the sponsor for further investigation. Um, we can uh, extrapolate these cells to measure secreted proteins, and we use this, uh, do this by means of a variety of, of um, state-of-the-art technologies, such as the Luminix MagPix or, or MSD QuickPlex XQ120. Uh, um, we would also get serum or plasma from the clinical trial, um, and here we'd actually be able to measure the pharmacokinetics in real time and, and also perform sort of fast turnaround of, of data. Um, and um, in addition to that, we can then support a variety of immunological assessments where we can get whole blood and we can label these with fluorescently tagged antibodies, and we can investigate by means of flow cytometry whether the various markers go up or go down, whether immune cells are activated, um, and, um, and, and this all ties into um, the safety um, of, of um, the molecule during the trial and whether it's having the desired effect by uh, binding to its, its target. 
So that just gives a little flavor of um, the, the type of assessments um, that, that we can support in, in a bioanalytical environment um, in, in real time um, for, for the clinical trial um, to, to enable uh, the success of, um, of the study. In terms of project timelines, um, it's probably a, a critical path to get the bioanalytical uh, component uh, set up ahead of the clinical trial. Um, it, it takes a, a, a several weeks in order to develop an assay, then validate it according to the um, EMA or FDA bioanalytical guidances, um, and to put all of the, the, the data associated with the development and validation through a quality assurance process to ensure um, that um, we are ready for the study startup. So we're probably looking at about um, eight to 12 weeks, depending on how complex the molecule is, um, to develop and validate. Um, and, and this really needs to occur ahead of first patient, first dose uh, within the clinic. But what makes the um, advantage of having CMAX um, uh, in such close proximity within the same city um, uh, better than, uh, you know, working within the other unit. It's really, it's all about um, the seamless transfer of samples from CMAX to Agilex within the same city to allow fast turnaround. Um, and this is really critical for uh, oncology samples where whole blood processing to PBMC for immunological uh, uh, assessment um, is important. Um, and, and, and where uh, stability of, of drugs might be an, an important uh, consideration for either the PK um, uh, assessment um, or, or for PD. Um, we have integrated sample barcoding, um, which is advantageous, um, and we have regular communication. We've worked with CMAX for over 25 years. We have a, a really strong, um, solid relationship and uh, extensive knowledge and expertise within the clinical trial landscape within Australia. Um, so really the, the workflow at the bottom it creates a seamless integration from the, the time that we actually receive the samples from CMAX to processing and being able to rapidly turn the data around in, in real time um, to provide uh, uh, information for the safety assessment and decision making. So I hope that the, the webinar has been of, of, of some interest and just given a, a broad overview and a little flavor of um, what Agilex does and, and, and how we seamlessly integrate with, with CMAX, which is one of the largest and, and more established phase one units um, within Australia with, with ex extensive expertise um, in being able to deliver quality uh, for our clinical trials. Um, thank you, I'm happy to take any questions. All right, thank you, Kurt. All right, let's get Jane Kelly uh, involved in the conversation now, Jane. Um, let's, I've got some questions for you, Jane. I've got questions for you, Kurt, after that prezo, but let's start with Jane first um, and make sure you unmute yourself, Jane, when I ask you this. Um, so first, uh, what changes have you seen as a result of the pandemic at CMAX? Yeah, hi, Arslan. And uh, firstly, thank you to the organizers, Endpoints, and the sponsor, Agilex, for allowing me to be part of this exciting webinar. But yeah, coming to your question, what changes have we seen at CMAX as a result of COVID? From a site perspective, really there's been a heightened awareness in respect to the processes that were already in place. So our focus at CMAX, of course, is the safety and welfare of the participants and staff. So some of the changes, um, as I said, it's just been a heightened awareness and things including and certainly not limiting to, you know, a focus on hygiene within the facility, monitoring for any signs or symptoms of illness prior to entry to the facility and performing a risk assessment uh, for each study. Now, we were already doing these risk assessments, but there's been a real increased focus on what the mechanism of action of the investigational product in terms of immunosuppression. So if we see a product uh, that has the potential to cause any um, effect on the immune system, then there's really that risk assessment to say whether studies can continue as they were planned, do, does the design need to be modified, do they need to be delayed, or in some cases even stopped um, in the short term. Um, social distancing measures within the facility and office space were also established immediately, and we've had to be flexible and modify them in line with the government advice as it changes within Australia. 
and please note that we've been very lucky in our facility that it hasn't necessitated a change to the bed numbers. In fact, we're currently in the process of expanding from our current 55 beds to 66 beds in the coming months uh, due to the demand of work coming in. Um, so COVID really has resulted in an increase in clinical trial opportunities coming into Australia. What we've found is that international companies and whether they're pharmaceutical or biotech companies that were ready to conduct their clinical trials elsewhere in the world in another jurisdiction suddenly found that um, everything slowed down and in some cases stopped completely. So they've been looking at other opportunities and luckily in Australia, our, our relative incidence of COVID has been very low. So Australia has been as, seen as a very attractive destination. And in South Australia and Adelaide, uh, the only active cases that we've seen recently have been from return travellers that are in very strict hotel quarantine. So Adelaide is a perfect place to, to come to. It's really been business as usual, as Kurt alluded to before. Um, so Australia really has demonstrated the resilience and the capacity to not only survive this pandemic, but thrive through the pandemic and beyond. All right. Um... Glad to hear that. Um, so I understand you've been in this early phase um, clinical space in Australia for quite some time. Can you give the audience, um, what changes have you seen in your 27 years in early phase clinical trial research? Yeah. So yes, I have been very lucky to be involved with CMAX now for 26, actually nearly 27 years. Um, and really the early phase clinical trial space in Australia has certainly grown substantially. Um, the key, key drivers Kurt has gone through, but the key drivers for the growth are the speed to start up, uh, the quality and portability of the data, and of course, the very attractive R&D tax incentive that we have in Australia. So just to, to reiterate some of the points that Kurt made, to commence a phase one program in Australia, including conducting a first time in human study, you don't need an IND to get started. You can certainly be doing uh, filing for an IND in parallel but what we find for a lot of our particularly smaller companies, they like to get their hands on some human data, which means they can go out and raise some more money. They can get investment. They can make that early sort of go, no go decision. So not having to have your IND in place certainly speeds up that process. The approval to conduct the clinical trial lies solely with the ethics committee. There is no separate regulatory approval. The TGA as Australia's regulator acknowledge the clinical trial and add it to their database. But it does mean, as Kurt said, we can go from um, you know, designing a study, then putting into the ethics submission, from ethics submission to first dose in four to six weeks, which is a considerable time saving. Um, the data that's produced, produced is very high quality, and we know that it is 100% portable to any regulatory jurisdiction. So here at CMAX, we've been audited by the US FDA on a couple of occasions now, with the last being August 2019. Um, and the reason for the audits have been that our data has been, has formed part of an FDA regulatory submission. Uh, and in the case last year, it was for a biological licensing application. Um, we've also conducted studies and we know our data has formed part of regulatory packages to Canada, to Europe, to Japan, to China. So there is no doubt that our, our data is 100% is portable. And of course, the R&D tax incentive, as Kurt has already alluded to, one of the world's most attractive very, very helpful for SMEs um, in this space because they can claim back to 43.5%. And there are a lot of expert companies here in Australia who can guide, set up that system and make sure the companies do get maximum benefit uh, for everything they're eligible for. So the benefits have been recognised for some time now and there's some real growth and maturity within the early phase industry um, here in Australia. Um, and there's a true international focus. So, you know, sites and CROs have evolved their processes to respond um, for this need for, for early, you know, quick startup. Here at CMAX, we've also um, had a focus and grown our clinical pharmacology capacity and have very experienced and very knowledgeable PIs available to support um, sponsors in that sort of setup, making sure their study is designed to give them the answer that they require at the end of that. But the other real noticeable change that I've seen in the 27 years is really this evolution of adaptive study design and protocols being designed uh, to be able to be modified. So that it means, and this is another really good advantage of the collaboration we have with Agilex, is that we can design a study with multiple cohorts, 
we can actually collect those samples. They can be done in Agile X, as Kurt said, they can be processed straight away. We get really quick re uh, turnaround on results. And that means the sponsor can actually use that real time data to actually modify their study design. Hence, it results in less protocol amendments, less time spent with ethics. But it's also really what phase one is all about, is being able to look at your results as they come in and modify your design moving forward. So we see that as a real advantage and that's something that we've seen a lot of growth in. Very good. Uh, that was some of, the, some of the questions I had for Kurt right there in terms of your working relationship with Agile X right there. But let's, let's get Kurt involved over here. So I understand that uh, you were working on a vaccine study together with CMEX. Uh, what can you tell the audience about that? Yeah, um, it's, this is an incredibly exciting time. Um, so our current um, sponsor is working on a, a respiratory sensitial virus. Um, uh, these viruses uh, have a huge uh, morbidity uh, impact, especially uh, in, in uh, causing respiratory illnesses, pneumonia in, in kids. Um, and Agilex is supporting the bioanalytical co component of uh, the clinical trial. So we're in the process of setting these assays up for the sponsor. There'll be multiple ligand binding assays that we're um, setting up. And these assays will then be validated to the latest uh, USDA, FDA uh, bioanalytical guidance documents. Um, and, um, and then we'll be ready to deploy these assays on, on the clinical trial. Um, and in addition to the, the classical ligand binding assays, um, we will also be um, uh, getting a whole blood and processing uh, the blood to PBMCs in real time. And the advan advantage of having CMEX um, almost uh, next door um, in Adelaide is that we can get the whole blood in, 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 a, in a matter of, of minutes, certainly at least within an hour, to process um, whole blood to PBMCs. And then this uh, really uh, enables um, high quality data as the, um, the sample is at no um, time being compromised at all due to lengthy times being um, um, trafficked um, in an airplane from you know, one country to another or from one state to another. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a very exciting um, time to be a part of um, the clinical trial network um, and especially as we move to uh, support more uh, trials that you know, might also have uh, an impact on, on COVID-19. Okay, here's a question for you, Kurt. Um, through your experience, take us through the selection process from a sponsor's perspective. Um, typically in the past, I understand it's been the CRO that gets selected and then the CRO works with the bio labs. Is that changing in your view? Yeah, so we're finding more complex study designs coming through um, where consideration needs to be taken um, around the actual sample management. Um, so for example, for an immuno-oncology study or a vaccine study where there's going to be a requirement to not only look at the PK or the immunogenicity in the terms of the, the, the vaccine study, um, but there's also the requirement to look at the pharmacodynamics or the mode of action. And generally this is um, done on whole blood um, and is time critical. Um, and certain cell populations tend to die off you know, after um, eight hours, um, certainly after 24 hours. So it, it, it really, um, the, the decision making lies in, you know, where the local expertise is, where is the um, phase one unit um, and, and where is the lab in relation to that? Um, and so most um, sponsors, you know, would um, make the, the decision on, um, the entirety of the trial based around the logistics of the, the, the clinical trial itself and, and, and where the samples are, are coming from. Um, and, and so there's two ways of looking at it. Um, often the client would uh, approach a CRO, the CRO would then look at the phase one units and then look at um, the, the lab in relation to that. Um, on the flip side, we have uh, sponsors who like to take charge of everything um, and, and like to piece together the logistics for themselves. Um, Agilex Biolabs being the, the, the largest and most experienced lab is, is generally the go-to laboratory for, for clients within Australia. Um, and then working around the sample management and, and logistics um, is another consideration on, on how to piece that together within the clinical trial. Okay. 
Well, Jane, can you give us actually an example of a good working experience with Agile X Biolab, especially uh, you're in the same city? So any advantages you can speak to about that? Sure. Yeah, I have, I have quite a few examples, but one that really sticks to my mind was in the past, we had a study that involved um, an opiate medication. And as part of the safety uh, for the participants, we needed some assurance of what the level of that opiate in their bloodstream was before we actually allowed them to leave the facility and be discharged. So what we needed was a, a spot PK check, uh, non-QC data. We just needed a really quick snapshot of at that point in time, what was the level of the opiate and was it safe for us to allow them to leave the facility? So having Agilex in the same city and you know, looking out my window, I can just about see where Agilex is. So we're literally 10 minutes down the road. That was invaluable. Um, and that meant that we could then discharge those participants with a real um, security of knowing exactly what their blood level was. Um, and then the full assay could happen separate to that, of course. But um, yeah, it was a really great advantage of not having to send those samples elsewhere, either within Australia or overseas for sure. Okay. Um, Kurt, I mean, um, similarly, could you speak to that working relationship with CMAX, especially that phase one unit? Why, why, why is it important to have that strong working relationship here with this phase one unit? It, it, as Jane alluded to, it's all, it's all around the safety um, of the participants. Um, and the you know, communication and a good working relationship is key in order to not only deliver on the safety aspects, um, but also to deliver on the trial itself. You know, we work in the phase one um, space, which comprises a variety of you know, single and multiple escalation dose um, studies. Um, and you know, data is really required in, in, in real time. And um, you know, in order not only to make decisions for escalating to the next dose, but you know, also decision around the, the, the safety um, of the, the, the participants in, in the trial. Um, and you know, it, a good working relationship such as the one that we have with CMAX is really imperative to be able to deliver on this because you know, we need um, you know, good sample logistics. We need to know when we're going to be receiving samples so that we can book them into our system so that we can have um, the analysis done um, in, in a, a rapid um, manner to enable data to be um, sent out uh, for safety review committee evaluation in order to uh, make the decision as to whether to change the study design or whether to escalate up to the, the next dose. Um, and it's only having a strong working relationship with a phase one unit um, that enables that to, to occur in a really seamless manner. All right, thank you, Kurt. Um, so here for our final question, Jane, um, can you just tell us a little bit more about you at CMAX and how um, clinical research has evolved? Certainly. Um, what we... So we, we are about to launch um, a new business called Fusion Clinical Research, which will be part of the CMAX uh, family. Um, Fusion Clinical Research is an SMO or a site management organisation. And it's a model where CMAX is going to embed staff, process and systems within primary health practices, within um, specialist clinics or even uh, a hospital setting to assist the investigator to conduct clinical trials. So it's ideally suited for investigators who have a keen interest uh, and willingness to conduct clinical trials, have patient populations, but they don't have the infrastructure to necessarily do, do so. So the model we're using, CMAX is actually owned by a, a Japanese company called the IROM Group, who are actually a pioneer in this area in Japan. So really we've taken the model that's been very successful in Japan and we're bringing it to Australia. Um, so we're leveraging off the success and experience of CMAX um, and Fusion will allow us to work with, with our clients, with our sponsor companies to take the S asset from phase one into phase two and three in the community. So we've already conducted a range of studies in the vaccine and diabetes space and we're very excited how this fits into the clinical trial landscape in Australia. So this will allow CMAX to diversify our service offering and differentiate ourselves from other players within the local landscape. But this also will allow for further collaboration with, with Agilex Biolabs, because we'll now have samples coming not only from the CMAX phase one, 
facility, but on the early phase two space, there will be samples coming in from, from various clinics around Adelaide. Very exciting. So fusion clinical research, that's that's the new mantra here that's going to be taking it beyond the early stage clinical research for which CMAX is. Exactly. Very good, very good. Well, that's all the time that we have for today's session. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Agilex Biolabs, and Kurt Sales for your very insightful presentation as always, and really appreciate you, Jane Kelly, with CMAX Clinical Research for your lending your time and expertise today. For Endpoints News, I'm Arsalan Arif. See you next time.